I'm happy to share an exciting opportunity for high school students who live in Florida's 7th Congressional District. We are launching an essay contest where the winner will attend the President's State of the Union Address on January 29th at the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C. An exciting opportunity indeed. I love this. It's for one local high school student. And we're so happy to welcome Congress, Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy to News 6 at 9. Thank you so much for coming by. We know you're super busy. You're headed yes. back to Washington right after this. Yes, thanks so much for having me on this morning. Oh, this, this essay contest is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Tell us about it. Well, I'm really excited to be hosting this essay contest. I'm chair of Future Forum, which is a group of influential uh, younger, younger members of Congress who seeks to amplify young Americans' voices. And so I'm always really interested in hearing uh, young leaders' voices from my own district. This contest will give high school students a chance to write a 500 word essay about why it's important to be civically engaged. And then a group of educators will um, pick the winner. The lucky uh, high school student will get a chance to be my guest at the January 29th State of the Union. Wow. And um, applications need to be in uh, by Thursday at noon um, on January 17th. So you can submit your application at murphy.house.gov slash contest. Mm. And for whoever wins this, I mean, this could be a life-changing mm -hmm. experience for them. What are you hoping this student gets out of this? I hope that they feel inspired and um, appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this incredible democracy. I think one of the most dangerous things to our democracy is when we have disengaged citizens. And I feel too often some of our younger Americans feel dis uh, disengaged, mm -hmm. maybe disappointed with the government that they see. And I'm hopeful that um, this will encourage them to uh, be active and to participate in this democracy. Tell us about Future Forum. You were elected chair of that, and, and it's providing a, a, an, an outlet for younger voices. We're about 50 of the youngest members of Congress and growing. Um, and what we seek to do is to meet young people where they are, in coffee shops, college campuses, in their communities, all across this country. We've been to over 50 places over the last four years since the group was formed. And what we do is we listen to young people identify the issues that are important to them, and then amplify their voices back in Congress and make sure that in the legislative process, their interest and their uh, concerns are reflected. Why do you think it's so important to engage with the younger voters and the future voters? I think it's so incredibly important because this next generation has already eclipsed are boomers in size. Wow. They are the largest generation. They're 30 per, uh, millennials are 30 percent of the workforce. And then you're seeing post millennials who are just beginning to get their right to vote engage in their democracy um, in unprecedented ways. Um, after Parkland, the post millennials really started to use their voice and demand action out of their elected officials. It's a great opportunity to engage this group of Americans. You're also part of the Influential House Ways and Means Committee. Tell us about that. I was really excited to be appointed to House Ways and Means Committee. I think it's incredibly important for um, somebody from Florida, the third largest state, to have a voice on this committee that determines revenues, Social Security and Medicare, um, programs for uh, seniors and children. And um, I'm really looking forward to representing my constituents uh, on this committee. And top of everyone's mind right now, of course, the government shutdown. Mm -hmm. We're on day 24. How is this affecting you and what can we expect in the coming days? This is the longest shutdown in history, and it is unacceptable. I want to see us work in a bipartisan way to end this Trump shutdown. And in fact, the House Democrats, the very first action we took when we um, took over the majority this year was to pass appropriations bills to reopen government, the very same bills that the Senate had passed in December. But now Senate Republicans are refusing to act on these bills, but they must. We have to open government. We can have a debate about what uh, border security entails, but we shouldn't do it while Americans suffer, federal workers suffer, and our economy suffers. We need to reopen government and then continue the conversation. Do you think it can happen this week? It, I certainly hope it, need, it, it, it happens this week. That is the focus. We will continue to pass appropriations bills um, to enable the Senate some options on how they open up, reopen government, but we can't hold these other agencies hostage. And of course, you have a lot on your agenda. What else do you have going on? 
Well, I'm just really excited to um, start my second term, continue to listen to my constituents. I'll be doing listening um, sessions next week all across this district, um, listening to my constituents and identifying what's important to them to help craft what the next two years uh, will look like for me. Wonderful. Well, we can't wait to see which lucky student gets to yes. come out with you so for the State of the Union. We'll it's keep everyone updated and add this information to clickorlando.com as well so those who want to enter have time to do so. Yes. Great. Thank you for taking yes. time out of your Thank schedule. You. We know you're busy. Of course. Thanks for having me on.